So you're probably like me and love using your drone to capture photos and videos of people and the great outdoors and even experiencing it. And with the Air 2S, that makes it such a breeze, honestly. Since the introduction of the Air 2S almost a year ago, there have been a ton of accessories that have come out and claimed to be really essential. But are they? So in this video, we'll go over the different accessories that I found to be useful, not only for myself when I do outdoor videography with my drone, but also for beginners and more advanced flyers. So let's get into it. So with the Air 2S, one of the most important things you need to protect at all times is the camera and its gimbal. I know I'm just like waving, I'm trying not to wave this around or damage anything. And DJI actually includes one of those stabilization things that go right on here to protect the camera and gimbal at all times, especially when you're traveling and you're just putting it straight into a backpack. However, I've not really found it to be useful and really easy to put on and off very quickly. In outdoor videography and photography, you're often at a moment's notice launching your drone to capture footage or and bringing it right back down and you have to hurry and pack it all up. And with that gimbal protector, it's really hard and not user-friendly to put on and off again. Because for me, it often takes a minute or two to actually try and wrangle this thing to hold it still and, you know, put it back on. You know what I'm talking about. One accessory that I found is actually this gimbal protector right here. Not only does it hold and protect the gimbal while you're carrying it around, but it also protects the front sensors as well. And did I mention it's really easy to put on and off? All you need to do is just line this up and boom, you're done. That was, what, five seconds? Compared to like the minute or a half you're gonna spend just trying to put that on. It's ridiculous. Afterwards, this feels solid. Have you ever tried to put this in like a bag with felt all around it? What it ends up doing is it just catches these and it just like flings them all over and then by the time it's in the bag, your, your props are all over the place. They're sticking up and they could get broken at any moment's notice. One thing that I've found to be extremely helpful to making this more compact and solid is actually using a prop holder like this. So all you do is you just line up the props just right here, just put it on, and then you just strap it on. And then afterwards your props are solid and this can go in and out of backpacks so quickly and it doesn't damage the props at all. And with the two accessories, the, the front gimbal protector and then also the, the prop holder, this thing feels solid as a rock. I can easily just put it in, take it out of backpacks, not have to worry about damaging anything. This thing, it's solid. For some people, putting their drone just in and out of their backpack is plenty protection enough. In other sports, such as like kayaking or canyoneering, where water is introduced into the element, you can't necessarily just throw this in your backpack or even dry bag and pray that it will be protected through everything. For those kind of scenarios, what I recommend actually is using a hard case. Like for example, this is a Nanook case. They're a Canadian company, kind of like a competitor to Pelican. What this offers is a waterproof, dustproof, and even shockproof alternative to just throwing it in your bag and just hoping it stays safe the entire time. For example, in this, you can put custom foam and stuff like that in there, or you can actually use a padded divider thing like this that I use that I actually keep my camera in and also like my drone, like then my drone would just go right, wait, where, where does it go usually? Like my drone would just go right here and then I can pack other accessories, the controller, extra batteries, ND filters, which we'll get to later. And then my camera just right here, all of it protected. I've taken this case through a lot of different slot canyons where it's gone into water, and it's been hit against canyon walls, not on purpose, it's by accident, of course, but it's kept all of this protected. So. Granted, this isn't one of those accessories that I would recommend to every single person. I would really recommend it to those who are going into more dangerous places and more wild environments that have water and you're gonna be swimming or just harsher terrain. Sometimes takeoff and landing areas really aren't ideal. And that can be because tall grass, there's snow, the ground is wet and damp, it's all muddy, you know, things like that. So in cases like that, what I recommend actually is using this. This is a landing pad. It, you can find a bunch of these on like Amazon or different places, but it's foldable once, portable. <clears throat> yeah, that just hit me in the throat, that's nice. Apparently it can be used as a weapon against your throat. This can be put down on any ground that's unsatisfactory for landing and you can have that peace of mind with it. 
Well, granted, I think flyers with more experience will probably be like, yeah, this isn't for me. And that's right. I would honestly recommend this for beginners or even when you go places that you're like, I'm really unsure about the terrain and you know, I'm not really comfortable yet landing it in my hand. And then when you're done, all you do is you just kind of twist and fold that thing. Sometimes I'm a little afraid now it's gonna karate chop me in the throat, but easy to fold up, put right back in the bag. With the Air 2S, average flight times are around 30 or so minutes, depending on your usage and a whole bunch of other factors like wind and also how fast you're going, things like that, you know. And one of the first accessories I always recommend to people when buying the drone is actually picking up another battery because 30 minutes for some people is quite a long time, but for people like us, 30 minutes doesn't really cut it. And while these kind of don't come cheap at 120 bucks a pop, they're still really helpful in the long run. Unless if you're using the drone typically all day and quite a bit, two batteries per day is what I recommend. And that's because I use one for sure. And then the second one is a backup in case if I need to fly more or if something happens. So, so for the times that I spend probably like two to three days away from a power source where I can recharge my batteries afterwards, what I end up doing is I actually bring this little bad boy along. So this is an external battery pack where I can just plug in my battery charger and I can just recharge everything. Not only is this great for different emergencies like recharging your phone or GPS or other things like that, it's great for recharging your drone batteries. Like this one, for example, I know I can take this on a week long thing and recharge my batteries multiple times. I've yet to run out of juice out of this thing after recharging the batteries multiple times throughout a week. So there's two different types of external battery packs. You have your basic one that everybody's kind of used to where it's like this small. These kind do hold a lot of charge for phones and different smaller accessories like that. However, these drone batteries require a little more oomph in the electricity department. So I've yet to find a way to charge the drone batteries from a USB accessory like this. And that's why we move to the bigger ones that have these wall outlet styles where you can plug in your drone battery charger and it'll, it'll be totally just fine. However, this isn't one of those accessories I recommend to every single drone flyer. This is great for those who take their drones on like week long trips and they're not even close to any source of power. And this is gonna be the only way they can recharge their batteries. So a lot of you can probably relate to the same problem that I have, is that when I take my drone out on day trips or week long adventures, lighting conditions are not exactly always ideal. And that's because we can't always be in perfect situations. We just kind of have to capture what's going on. And one thing to help with that is something called ND filters. So what ND filters do is they only allow a certain amount of light to actually pass through this lens and into the camera sensor. So the reason why we use ND filters is so that it keeps our ISO down so we don't introduce that digital noise into our video or image. And also we can keep our shutter speed at what we want. And usually these come in a, a varying pack of like eight or 10 or so. You can take this a step further and actually get something called variable ND filters, where if you just twist this, it actually changes how much light is allowed in. So before you even take off your drone, you can test it and see how bright it is or how dark it is, and then just change it just right on the drone. Super, super easy to use. One of the most versatile and used accessories that I own actually was a surprise to me. I, at first, I honestly brought it just as a joke because I was like, well, I got the space, might as well, who cares, right? Funny enough, I actually ended up using it a lot more than I thought I would. This accessory was actually a microfiber cloth. Not only does this provide a layer of protection in your backpack, like for example, you could just have it like a cute little burrito, just put it right inside your traveling bag, especially for hiking or anything else. It's also great for cleaning your drone, especially when there's like bug splatter on the props, or even you've accidentally touched the sensor with your finger and it's left a fingerprint, like, and you're gonna be grateful that you had it when you do. One of the worst things a drone flyer can ever experience is the nightmare of running out of storage space, especially when you're in the craziest places you've ever been. And all of a sudden you get that dreaded pop-up that says, no more storage space. Because once you've experienced it once, you really don't ever want to experience it ever again. So to combat this, one of the first accessories that I recommend to people 
that they get when they first get this drone is actually to pick up a high capacity SD card, a, a micro SD card, I should say. Because with it, you're really never gonna run out of space on trips. And the storage capacity really depends on your needs. If you're one of those individuals that stays close to home and you typically can kind of just dump your footage after one day of use, then you're gonna probably be really comfortable with 32 gigs or 64 gigs, depending on your needs. However, if you're someone like me that uses this drone for like a week straight that doesn't have the opportunity to dump footage when they can, then I would go with something a little higher, like 128 or 256. And with how cheap SD cards are today, you don't really have a good excuse not to get yourself one. Propeller guards are one of the more goofy looking accessories that you can slap on your drone. And while they kind of look eh, a little weird, I do recommend them to two different types of people. The first is beginners. They're first learning how to navigate their drone and to be able to navigate it through tight spaces or maneuver in different techniques and just overall learn how to use it properly. And having propeller guards allows a beginner to safely navigate and also if they make a mistake, it's not gonna ruin their drone, especially when you're making an investment like this, that's a thousand dollars right now. And for the second group, I'm gonna actually explain this with a story. So one of the first times I actually took my drone canyoneering was in this great luscious forest. And in it, it had a lot of waterfalls and also it was pretty tight. And when we got to one of these waterfalls, I decided that I should be the first one to rappel down so I could video everybody with my drone also rappelling. And when I got down to the bottom, I quickly realized how much wind was actually coming off that waterfall. And it was because of how narrow the canyon was that it was just kind of like forcing all the wind to go through this one spot. However, I decided to launch my drone anyways, and it was an amazing experience. After everyone had finished rappelling, I decided to bring the drone back to this narrow corner where the wind wasn't as prominent. And when I tried to land the drone, a sudden burst of wind actually pushed the drone into a canyon wall and it went bonkers. It just went everywhere, crashing into different walls and ended up in the water. Looking back, if I had brought propeller guards, that mishap may not have happened. And so for the second group, I think it's a very unique one. It's for those who fly their drones in very tight places where they need that extra protection in case if they crash. It's not to say that they're bad or anything at flying, but it's for their own protection in case of outside forces, like in my example, wind, push their drone into a canyon wall and end up breaking it or drowning it in my case. While I know this doesn't really count as an accessory, I think it is because Honestly, having that peace of mind knowing that in case if I take my drone into like different places that have harsher environments like say that waterfall example or to a lake or anything like that, if something were to happen, like if something were to happen, I could just pay the hundred bucks and get a brand new drone. And this kind of insurance reassures me that if I were to take this drone into different places that I can get it fixed really easily. And for some, the DJI refresh may not be a valid option for them, and that's totally okay. I think this is more geared towards people who use their drones for a living, or if they take it and use it in various different harsher environments like I do. All of these accessories can be a world of a difference for you and your drone flying, but they can't save you from bad looking footage. If you're looking to take your drone footage to the next level, we've got a video for you, and all you need to do is just click right here. Super easy, just right there. Just, just one click, that's it.